What's up, guys? Welcome back to the show with your favorite chemically imbalanced best friend, your emotionally inept partner. What's going on, guys? We're on episode 48. Are we? Yeah, we are. <laughs> I had to make sure for a second. Guys, this is going to be a very strange sort of podcast. There's two major things going on right now that I think is going to uh, really affect this episode. For one, it's like 11 o'clock at night um saturday oh my gosh uh, happy halloween you guys i know it's not today's the 28th i know halloween isn't today but this is probably going to come out well t- tomorrow it's the 29th that's still not halloween but you know when some of y'all might listen to this on halloween so happy halloween can y'all do me a personal favor and if not that's fine i won't like feel any type of way i'll just cry and think you guys hate me so it's no big deal no big deal but if you guys could could you please send me um pictures of your uh what the fuck are they called Uh, uniforms no no halloween costumes yeah jesus could you please send me um a picture of your halloween costume from this year even if we don't talk even if you've never sent me a dm or anything like that just be like hey girl listen to your podcast episode this is what i went as you know for halloween this year and i will eat that the fuck up because i'm not gonna lie to y'all i i didn't dress up this year because i literally just got back from a trip that i took y'all know (laughs) at this point y'all know where i went i had to you know the my ears had to tell my ankle something but um so i didn't get a chance to dress up mango did invite me to this like uh halloween type listening party But honestly, as soon as she sent me the flyer for it, like my anxiety flared up. Like I just, I'm not the, I just can't, I I can't, I can't, I can't. So I really wanted to go and I really want to dress up because my, my costume is perfect. You know what I mean? I've been Garnet from Steven Universe for like the past seven years (laughs) and you know, I I eat it up every time, you know, my big Afro, the body be body and then the little leotard, you know, we, we do it. All I need is the, the sunglasses, but obviously this year I didn't get a chance to do it. So I would love to see you guys as Halloween costumes. Also, guys, again, I don't know how this keeps happening to me. I am sick again. I think this is my body's way of telling me that the end is near. You know what I mean? Because if I'm dying, I would just like for it to be very upfront. I don't want a slow death. Never have, never did. Okay? I, I don't know what's going on. My throat is murked. Probably because I was swallowing dick all weekend. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Sorry. Sorry. Anyway, and also, like I just said, I don't know if I said it y'all i'm delirious it's also very late at night um so i didn't want to i didn't so usually when i don't have time on friday or saturday to record the episodes i usually just wake up early as fuck on sundays and record and then i edit and then i post but that takes so much work and anybody who knows me knows that i'm not a technical person so anytime i have to edit these videos it always takes me a long time because i'm fucking stupid i don't know what i'm doing but i manage you know and and we end up getting the episode out on time but um when i got off the plane i was like the first thing i'm doing is taking some mucinex drinking a hot toddy and recording the episode i thought i was gonna go to sleep but i knew if i did that i wasn't gonna get back up until like nine o'clock in the morning on sunday so here we are there's a couple things i want to talk to you guys about before we jump right into this episode i plan this episode is going to be silly as fuck the topics i have are just i'm just looking at like zaria why but before we get right into that i want to talk to you guys about three things one thing is the video episode you guys i'm having i'm so fucking excited to start doing video episodes for you guys really i am but i'm having such a hard time deciding if going back and forth between if the videos should only be on patreon or if they should be on all my platforms or if the videos should be on youtube for anyone to watch and just the first video could be my introduction to patreon because i have no patreon right now i have nothing the only thing i have is what you're listening to this on that's the only thing i have so and i really really want to get that patreon started um so I don't know, guys. I'm just really, we're on literal episode 48. Fuck. Yeah, we're on 48. So I have two episodes to go to decide 
what I want to do and it's so much harder than I thought but it's also exciting so it's not like I'm not irritated and I'm not bothered by this confusion I'm just like excited because I'm just like oh I don't know I don't know which one I want to do like which one are they gonna perceive positively more you know also something that I wanted to mention to you um guys about the Patreon sorry if I keep pausing my my um throat is causing my voice to just shut off at random times sorry y'all I don't know why I keep getting sick but anyway, something really cool uh, that I wanted to uh, do in my personal Patreon, I don't know if anybody else does it in theirs, but I know that there's a lot of like black owned businesses and black owned everything. Um, so if you guys have like bracelets, beads, clothes, designs, rugs, anything that is hand created by you and you're trying to make it a brand, I would love to like shout out your company wear a hoodie wear a sock you know and just show it on camera and show the quality and show you know your brand and stuff like that so just to just to get even one person as a customer you know what I'm saying that's a huge leap um so yeah I would I would like to do that for y'all and also you know free merch for me I don't mind that that's great I love free stuff I'll fuck around wear the hoodie the whole episode so yeah I just thought that was um something nice that I could talk about also, the second thing that I wanted to talk about is when the 49th episode comes out of this podcast, you guys are going to have to wait at least two weeks for the 50th episode because I want it to be perfect. The only thing I don't have is the location, guys. The only thing I don't have is location. I'm not filming it in my bedroom like I record these audio episodes. I'm just not... I know you guys are like, oh, but it's okay. We get to see you in your natural element. We don't care where it's filmed. We just want to see you and hear you. Girl, no. Okay? I'm not filming my podcast episode with my bed in the background. I just can't do it. Your faves might be able to do it, but I'm not that girl. I just, I can't. My my sheets are cheetah print, y'all. It's giving, it's giving 16 years old, and I just, I can't be associated with that. <laughs> so, yeah. Once I find, I and I honestly, I'm not going to lie to y'all, I have a friend, Elijah, who has a wonderful setup. He has like anime stuff in the background. It's just like his bedroom. I might, I might give him like $200 and be like, let me rent out your bedroom for like two hours just so I can like do my shit and then I'll dip. I honestly might do that because it's not, honestly, Elijah, if you're listening to this, you might you might about to be two hundred dollars up. I know two hundred dollars isn't a lot, but it's one bedroom. Be fucking for real. Let me have it. And the last thing I wanted to talk to you guys about is just my seventy five heart challenge. I have honestly surprised myself, y'all. I did not think that I'd be able to do this for this long. Um, it's been going fantastic. Now, because we know that Zaria is bad at math, I I don't know how many days or weeks. <laughs> it's been you know I started this on October 23rd no I didn't I literally didn't I started on October 13th Jesus Christ um and it's currently October 28th so that's how many days it's been I've read about eight books um oh my gosh I could do like a book recommendation I'm not gonna do it on this episode but that'd be so super, super cute I follow a bunch of um black women on tiktok who are like who are like in the book talk community that would be so cute i don't think it would be like received well only by like obviously those two people but that's still pretty good if you're interested in um reading good books hey let me know anyway let me get into the fucking episode this is what happens when it's late at night and i'm sick you guys i just start rambling oh my god okay let me get into the episode welcome guys <laughs> welcome to the chemically imbalanced black girl podcast if this is your first episode listening i'm sorry and i hope you stay this is a very very weird crazy odd strange podcast um but i'm sure you'll be able to find something that you relate to in here because uh i'm ever okay anyway so guys i'm gonna jump right into these topics and this one made it made me I started okay let me tell y'all how I get the topics for these podcasts right if I have like a conversation with somebody or if I see something on TikTok or if like something really bothers me I like write it down in my notebook and I'm like don't forget to talk about that because you need to explain and get out why this bothers you so much because 
when I when it first bothers me, I'm always like, why the fuck did that bother me so much? And then when I talk about it on the podcast, I like self soothe and like when I start talking, I'm just like, oh yeah, that's why it fucking irritates me. So this first topic is gonna be list of things that piss me off, right? And I could have kept going, but luckily I only put four. <laughs> but these are like my top. I wouldn't even call them pet peeves, even though they kind of are. But it's it's not even a pet peeve because I feel like a pet peeve is some is like smacking or like, you know, little shit like that. These are things that actually like have made me yell at people and like get in the fights. The first thing, oh my gosh, this bothers me so much, and it shouldn't though. I actually yes, the fuck it should. I need to stop invalidating myself like that. When not when things make me mad, I always say it should have made me mad. Yes, the fuck it should because it pit it's it's annoying. <laughs> so, the first thing that pisses me off is when people get mad at strangers for not waving back or saying hi back to their babies in a store to the point where you have to make a slick ass comment or say the person my baby just spoke to you or it's like uh oh i guess i guess motherfuckers don't know how to speak my sister the one i don't fuck with y'all is one of those people I remember so vividly we were in Walmart and I guess if you go do shit like this it's, it's, it's in a Walmart so I have a niece named Ryla. She's seven. But at the time, she was about three or four. I tell everybody the story, bro. We were at Walmart. This is one of the last times me and my sister, like, hung out. Like, we're, or we were just on a good enough accord to, like, be around each other right now. Me and that bitch don't even look at each other in the eye these days. You know what I'm saying? I just, I, like, I don't know her. Because I just can't handle shit like this, right? So, we were in the Walmart. And my niece was running around and stuff like that. And my sister was screaming at her. She was like, Ryla, stop acting like a fucking buffoon. And I'm like, yo, you did not just yell at this little girl like she's 35. She's a baby. She's three. Like, relax. So after she cussed my niece out like she's a fucking grown woman, we continue walking. And I remember we got to the toy section. And my niece was trying to, like, get on a bike. And she was, like, struggling to get on the bike because me and my sister were, like, looking at something else to get her. And a stranger had walked past and she tried to grab this woman's arm to like stabilize herself on the bike so she wouldn't fall. And the woman kind of like moved away from her, you know what I'm saying? So she wouldn't like touch her. And my sister was like, you ain't have to do that to my baby. She just wanted to grab your hand. Girl, when I tell you I never leave my sister in the store so fucking fast, I was so embarrassed. I was like, I'm sorry, ma'am. It was an older lady too. Like she, my, my niece would have literally like killed her. The woman is trying to save herself. She don't know this fucking baby and she don't know neither one of our black asses. Like, I, I just don't understand. Like, my baby's speaking to you. Girl, fuck your baby. I don't I don't care. Like, why is that? Why well, don't understand why that's such a bad thing? I don't give a fuck about this child. Now, even though that's my niece, you know what I'm saying? I love her bones deep. I love her down. That's my girl. Would adopt her if something ever happened to my sister. But this lady don't give a fuck about her. Like, I, I, I don't understand why that's so hard to acknowledge. Like, and, and why are you teaching your kids or my niece to just be okay with touching and speaking to strangers? Leave that motherfucker alone. You know what I'm saying? Now, when your kid is away from you and he starts skipping and hopping and speaking to everybody and getting into everybody's cars and shit, you're going to be like, I just don't know why. I just don't know how this happened. But I just, Yeah. Leave the motherfuckers alone. Let let strangers be fucking strangers to kids. There is no reason why this motherfucker need to have a conversation with a strange ass two two year old. Now, what y'all would really hate, what you would really hate, if your two year old was sitting in the buggy and he say hi to a fucking stranger and some weird ass middle aged white man bend down and go, oh hi, what's your name? How are you doing? Would you like some cookies, sir? Get the fuck away from my baby. That's what you don't want, right? That's what you don't want. I, I, the girl that shit pissed me off so much every time I see it. Oh, you can't speak to my baby, ma'am. I don't know. I don't give a fuck about it. And y'all already know I don't like kids, right? I would never hurt a kid, but I don't give a fuck about children. I don't give a fuck about you or your kid. If you wouldn't have said this slick ass comment, both of our days would have never been, you know, interrupted. We would have just, you know what I'm saying? This little person isn't even a functioning member of society to me yet. I don't give a fuck about this kid. I came in here to get turkey, cheese, and bread, bitch. And I'm trying to go back to my crib. I don't want to talk to a two-year-old today damn you don't even know why i'm in this target maybe my dog just died and i'm coming to get a fucking candle to light for his ceremony and you worried about a fucking three-year-old saying hey to me girl (laughs) maybe i'm overreacting but still y'all it pissed me off so it don't matter if i'm overreacting this is me this is what i'm talking about the second thing that pissed me off 
is people who make a living off of pretending to be somebody else or even just make a living talking about other people, bro. Now, I know I don't have a lot of room in this uh, specific topic to talk about because I am a podcaster. You know, part of this job is finding shit to talk about. And sometimes that's other people to make content. I get that. But sharing opinions, oh, my voice sounds so sick. I'm so sorry, y'all. I could just hear the strain on my throat. Pause. But the the difference in taking a situation involving people and sharing, you know, your thoughts and opinions on it is totally different from imitating people and having content solely based on one specific person or a group of people. You know what I'm saying? When there's never any, like you in it i think that's fucking weird and i know you guys have all seen those two girls on tiktok oh it's hella people on tiktok to do it with hella famous people but specifically the two girls that imitate beyonce and Nicki minaj i personally think that's a mental illness and i'm cool with mental illnesses i got a i got a rap sheet of them bitch i got a whole hokage scroll of mental illnesses so i i I don't you know i'm not knocking it plus you're getting bags Bitch, if I, you, I'm, I'm literally, I'm currently trying to get a bag by talking about my mental illness, so I don't knock it. It's just weird as fuck, you know? And it's just like, I wonder when she's doing like the Nikki and Beyonce voice, I wonder like what she does when she pushes stop recording. Like, does she go, huh, well, okay, I guess it's back to being me now. Like, I don't know, y'all. I don't know. And y'all know like DJ academics and shit like that? Okay, perfect example. I think I told y'all this deep, deep down in episodes. My ex, my first boyfriend used to be the type of nigga who watched other niggas on youtube talk about other niggas and it used to make me so mad because just like why well he ended up being gay so that was probably why but i was just so uncomfortable with that like why do you want to hear another nigga talk about other niggas like and he probably lying like he doing up conspiracy theories and what ifs he don't even know these niggas you know what i'm saying why is the whole purpose of your family eating is because you sit up here with a microphone and a lamplight talking about other niggas like I don't like that I don't know y'all that one isn't as bad it don't really piss me off it just it just it gives off weird you know what I'm saying it gives me very very weird vibes and I don't like shit like that all right y'all number three and number four this right here this right here y'all I realized this while I was coming home and I haven't been a flight attendant for about a year right and I was a flight attendant for three years And I just realized this past weekend that it doesn't matter whether I'm a passenger or a fucking flight attendant. These two are still going to piss me off exactly the same. Okay, just listen. When people use the bathroom on an airplane and don't fucking shut the door behind them, bro. Oh my God. Okay, before I give you all the fourth one, because the fourth one is also uh, related to that. Let me give you all a quick little story time. So boom, it's uh maybe the end of 2021, right? COVID in full effect. Niggas can't get on the plane unless you wear the mask. All right, it's hectic. This was a this was one of the most hectic times to be a fucking flight attendant, y'all. I'm not lying. Niggas was actually throwing blows with with bitches, like with actual like female flight attendants. Little, I watched a coworker get punched in her fucking eye for telling a man to put his mask on. Like I shit you not, this was the hardest time to work in the customer service industry. People were losing their shit. So this specific flight. I think we had like three legs. Uh, A leg is just how many flights you work that day. So if you have a three, oh, fuck, this is going to be so hard to explain. Anyway, I'm not about to explain it. A leg is just how many flights you have that day. So for one day, we had four legs, which means we had four flights to do that day. I was fucking tired of these people. I was like, I, I, it's just, it just gets so old being sir pull your mask up over your nose and mouth bitch not just your mouth why why do you even have it on if it's not covering everything please pull your mask up please pull your mask up sir don't do that sir sit down i was just so i was so fucking fed up y'all i i i had had enough so on this specific plane i was working b which doesn't mean back <laughs> but i was in the back and i didn't like not working anything but first class because i just didn't but I was the late the the flight attendant I was working with was senior to me, so she got to pick her position, and obviously she picked first class. And I was like, "You fucking bitch!" So I'm in the back with uh with them, and uh, my jump seat is right fucking beside the lavatory, y'all. And little personal tidbit about me: I don't like to smell bodily air. I don't like to smell a burp, a fart, throw up air, bathroom air, 
piss air, shit air. I don't like to smell any air that comes from a human or I will fucking kill myself. Like I will throw up and die. That is not an exaggeration. I, I, I shit you not. That is some real shit about me. I can't handle it. So because my jump seat was right beside the lavatory, I decided to stand in my galley because everybody, for some reason, on this flight had to go to the fucking bathroom and nobody wanted to use the one at first class. It was pissing me off. And what was even pissing me off more is that the door to the lavatory is closed and you have to turn the knob like a regular fucking door to, oh, excuse me, to open that bitch. And you got to close it once you get in there to, to do your business, right? Every single person who went to this bathroom left the fucking door open and it bothered me so bad because I do not want to smell you. So anyway, there was this one specific lady. I had fe- I had been fed up. It's at this point, it's like eight people using the bathroom. Nobody shutting the door. There's like old man piss in the air. I'm I'm frustrated. Visibly, fu- I'm visibly frustrated. Right? This lady comes back. This is not an old lady at all. She's maybe 35, 36, Right? Old enough to have some fucking common sense. She goes to the bathroom. She's in there for a while. I'm thinking, oh, maybe she's. I don't know what the fuck I'm thinking. She in there doing? She was in there for like fifteen minutes, and that's a long time to be in a fucking airplane bathroom. This lady comes out. This lady comes out of the bathroom. And the worst. <laughs> hold on. This podcast episode is sponsored by Mason and, and Matthias. Those are my cousins that are fucking with me right now. Anyway, she comes out of the bathroom and the most horrifying smell I've ever smelled in my entire life follows her. And this bitch leaves the door wide open. I stood up and I was like, ma'am. <laughs> and then the worst part about that is. I, I'm sitting in the back, so I'm in the back, right? I scream, ma'am, this lady don't even fucking hear me. She keep walking, right? She going all the way back up to the front. I done scared everybody in, like, the last five rows of the airplane because I screamed, right? So she, she act like she didn't hear me. I pick up that fucking PA phone, and I go, excuse me, ma'am, could you please come shut the laboratory door? I do not want to smell this. And I put that bitch back. She turned around, face white as a fucking ghost. I was like, yeah, bitch. Come close this fucking door. First of all, I don't know who has the 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 mental capacity to shit on the plane anyway. You a strong bitch for doing that, first of all. Because I, I could never sit down on an air... I, I, I don't even fucking use the bathroom on an airplane. I've been a flight attendant for too long. I see some nasty ass shit in there I could never do. And I know what y'all thinking. Oh, Zaria, that's petty. You ain't have to embarrass her like that. If it was me, I would have da 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 And that's fine. That's fine. I'll take I'll take being in the wrong. I'll take the petty suit for today. That does not bother me. Um, because if if you would first of all, if you would have smelt the smell that this lady released into the fucking atmosphere, no, there would have been no empathy or sympathy left to give her. You know what I'm saying? It smelled like she dropped a fucking dragon off in that fucking toilet. I don't know what was going on with her. So she scurries back to the back of the airplane and she's like, oh, uh, sorry, I, I just, uh, I don't know what the fuck excuse she gave me. I really wasn't even listening. I was like, yeah, thanks. Like, uh, uh, <laughs> that's literally like the only time in my life where I've been an asshole on purpose because I was so fed up. And why would you not close the door behind you after you just did that? I'm sitting right next to it. That's so disrespectful. You know what I'm saying? And she was white, so it just it just made me even more mad. You know what I'm saying? Y'all know, that's not, you know what I'm saying? When white people do shit, it just pissed me off even more. I don't know why. I don't know why. I didn't write the cards this way, okay? It's history. <laughs> I'm just kidding. And then the fourth and final one is still tied into this, is when people ask to use the bathroom right in the middle of boarding. Why? Why? There are 87 people behind you, and your seat is in two. Why are you trying to come all the way back here to use the bathroom? And then you got to figure out a way to get the fuck back to seat 2B. Just, and, and first of all, not only, you were just surrounded by at least 15 bathrooms out there at the gate. Why did you decide that you needed to go to the bathroom right now? We boarding last 20 minutes tops. You had time to run to the fucking bathroom. That, that just, that just make me, it's so, it's so, what I'm trying to say is you had ample time and opportunity to use the bathroom outside at the gates and Flight attendants, uh, unless it's Delta Airlines, I don't know if y'all know this, flight attendants don't get paid for boarding. That's why a lot of flight attendants don't help people put their bags in the overhead bins. That's why you don't see a lot of flight attendants at boarding time to help with shit and because we're not getting paid. So you're, ru- you're, you're, you're wasting my time on fucking purpose and you're causing an inconvenience for no fucking reason. Like my, 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 uh... My time card, my money doesn't start get, be... Oh, sorry, please don't stutter. <laughs> my money doesn't start 
clocking down until the fucking door shuts. So it's just like, please hurry up. And sit. That's why flight attendants rush all the fucking time. Hurry up and sit the fuck down and find a seat so I can start getting paid so I can actually be a fucking flight attendant and want to help you niggas. Because when money is not being made, I don't want to help nobody. I don't give a fuck. I don't, if you can't pack a bag that you could put in the overhead bin, maybe you shouldn't have packed that bag so fucking heavy. I don't care. You think I'm going to throw my 25 year old back out? Just n- no, unpaid so I can't even get workman's comp? Absolutely not. See, I'm having flashbacks. This is why I don't want to be a flight attendant no more, y'all. I can't do it. I'm going to have to edit the fuck out of this episode. If this makes it into the final cut and I don't edit anything and I show y'all like the really raw version of this episode, y'all are going to like hear like 30 seconds of my cousins just banging on my door. And you know what? That's a raw, that's a raw cut. You know what I'm saying? So I might not edit it out. Y'all always say, oh, we need you to tell it. Yeah, I'll leave it in there. Just, just because I just said that, I'll leave it in there. I'm not going to edit shit about this episode. I could fart right now and I wouldn't edit it out. I'm lying. Yes, I would. I could never do that, do y'all. All right, guys. Next topic. Um, And I have an existential crisis thought for you guys. <laughs> I didn't do it last episode. I will do it this episode and then I'm going to wrap it up because I don't know if y'all can hear, but my congestion is getting worse and worse. Like, oof. But all right, guys, on to the next one. This next one is super fucking funny to me. I saw this uh, thread on Instagram and the comments had me in shambles. So I'm gonna just read them off to you guys. And I'm not gonna lie to y'all. Some of them I was fucking with a little bit. Some of them, some of them I wasn't. So I was just like, so I'm, I'm gonna read, I'm gonna read the thread to you guys. So this was a question on Instagram. It said, have y'all ever been turned off while having sex and what caused it? And y'all, some of these fucking replies in the comments, I'm, oh my gosh, they were crazy. So I'm, I'm gonna read them off to you. So the first one and the most famous one was, I looked back while he was hitting it from the back and he waved at me. When I first read that, y'all, I had fucking tears in my eyes because all of the replies to that comments were like, what the fuck? What kind of nigga was that? I'm not gonna lie. I would probably marry that nigga. That is so fucking funny to me. Let me be getting railed from behind and i look back just to take in the scenery you know of what's being done to me and this nigga throw up a peace sign i will bust out laughing i i think laughing while having sex is one of the most euphoric feelings ever i love that it's so it's such a connecting ass feeling especially when like both of you know why you're laughing. It's just, it's beautiful. That's the kind of nigga you marry. Unless it was like the twiddly fingers. I don't know how I feel about twiddly fingers. That would have gave me like pervert vibes. But if he was just like, what's up? I would have been weak as fuck. Like, yeah, look at me drill your shit. Anyway, one girl said, he said, I can't believe I'm banging you. And in that instant, I knew my standards drop. Listen, sis, let me, let me tell you why they might not have dropped though. Let me, let me really say this though. Everybody knows, and this is a fact, and if a lot of men don't know it, so what? But a lot of men do. I think every woman knows it. The best relationships are when the man is more obsessed with the woman. That's period. You always want to be the thing that he is just like, oh my fucking God, look at my girl. Look at my wife. This bitch is a fucking diamond. Like, I can't even believe I get to touch you, let alone wake up next to you every day. Like, oh, bitch. Like, I can't, like, I'm just, I'm, I'm nothing but a, but a humble peasant. Like, this bitch is serving queen. She's serving princess. She's serving goddess. You know what I'm saying? So I don't think that's letting your standards drop. I think if you are fucking with a nigga that you don't even believe in your mind that you could be, fu- or like you think he's out of your league or something, I think that's just premeditating like some um, insignificancy. I don't know. It's just like you're giving yourself a, a teaser of of insecurity and shit like that because if you want him this bad then you know other bitches do and that's gonna create a whole problem not always not always i've seen fine ass niggas match with fine ass women and they work out perfectly but most of the time the shit works out perfectly when the man is more obsessed with the woman and i think that this was just an example of that you know what i'm saying he was he was really now now i'm she is the only one who knew what he looked like so you know if he was you know if he was up there in, you know, ugliness, then sis, you know, yeah, well, you know, <laughs> I don't know what to say today. <sighs> yeah, bro, this one kind of gave me the ache. This one said his best friend called while we were doing it and he answered it. It just kept going like everything was fine, which isn't even the worst part. 
The worst part was his phone was so loud that I could e easily hear his friend doing it with his girlfriend too. It creeped me out so bad. I don't think I could do this. I think, I think me personally, I would have got scared. Like, that's gay. I love gay stuff. Love gay men, love gay women. I'm gay. Partially. 50%. But that would have creeped me to... That, to be honest with y'all, it's giving James and Fouhead. Like, that. why? Why do y'all do that? And, and let me tell y'all something. I don't kink shame unless it's race play. And unless it's like phone call shit i don't like that race play and phone call shit and y'all know what race play is when you know i'm not even going to explain it i judge that heavily because that's fucked up and whenever you want to like i've i've seen like <laughs> i've seen <laughs> all right so i've been in a little situation where one of my exes was you know we were doing to do and he wanted me to call my mom while we were doing it and i dried up like the sahara desert within six seconds i said excuse me my vagina literally was like um nigga what did you just say and i was on top so i i was just like this is not no no so i love a good kink i love a good dirty nasty sex experience i love i love bdsm however you however you want to get down is how you get down and i love it would love to hear all about it do not like race play and do not like phone call kinks like that is just nasty to me like uh no like you might as well just have a fucking brothel you might as well just have that nigga in here while we're fucking ew this next one short and sweet she just said y'all he bit my fucking clit <sighs> let me tell y'all something else about me i don't think that's too bad now unless he was trying to chew this motherfucking like like a now and later that's that's where that's where you kick that nigga in his forehead but a little love bite you know what i'm saying i like rough sex so you know biting smacking you know <laughs> that's my that's my bread and butter so I, when i read that i was like "Ooh, ouch <laughs> this one just said i told him to go deeper and he said i can't listen uh, nigga don't admit that never back down never what you cannot admit defeat just 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 try like you don't know if you can't go deeper just try put a pillow under the pelvis or something you know lift a bitch up you can go deeper don't ever say that don't ever say that first of all don't no bitch want to hear i can't <laughs> don't no bitch ever want to hear the words i can't while having sex like that in itself is a turn off like yes you can even if you genuinely can't you can you can you fucking can someone said use this phone flashlight to find the hole <sighs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, listen, it is hard to find. You know what I'm saying? I, and, you know, back in the day in my escapades, used to use a strap. And, you know, even that I got one, it is still hard to find. You know what I'm saying? That space between the ass and the, and the you know, it's very difficult. So I can't even fault my brother, my brethren, for using the phone flashlight. Because how else am I going to get it in there? <laughs> he was using, he was using his skills, okay? lay off of them oh my god this one unfortunately sounds like something i would do this girl said he was eating me out and i clenched up and said got your nose and he left <laughs> oh my gosh when i tell you i'm crying hold on when i tell y'all that sounds like something exactly i would do and i don't know why i would do it oh my god it's just one of those moments where you like misjudge the sexy seriousness in the situation. It's just like, bitch, this is not the time to be getting niggas' noses. Like, ugh, I'm sorry. I'm flawed. This one says she was bald and told me to lick her head make stroke. I don't see a problem with that. I don't understand how that's a turn off. I would have licked the fuck out of her head. What do you mean? And she told me to do it? This is like a demand, which means like this is like a kink of hers. Boy, I would have licked the fuck out of her head. And, and, Anybody who knows me personally, you know I love a bald woman. Oh, oh my God. A bald woman can get anything she want out of me. I'll give that bitch my liver. Oh my God, I love a bald woman. Y'all know who Tati Gabrielle is? She played Prudence on um the, the revamp of Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Boy, hey, look, mm, that's a fine, that's a fine bald woman right there. Lord have mercy. All right, I get this one. This one says she tried to put her legs upon my shoulders, but the back of her heels were ashy and she scratched me. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. 
crunch monsters are not sexy i don't care who they on if your feet dry and cracky sis it's not cute sir either i don't want no nigga with no crunchy ass toes crunchy ass heels yeah soak them in soak them in epsom salt and oatmeal and get your life together all right y'all the last one and this one relates so 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 hard to me it says the radio was playing in the background and a gospel song came on now i personally have (laughs) experience with that so y'all know recently i've been talking about my man who's not my man but he's my man right he's not my man but i guarantee you he's nobody else's man let's just get that let's just get that for sure right he's not my man but he also is nobody else's man so i'm gonna i'm gonna give you guys a little peek this is really a story for patreon but i'm gonna give y'all a little peek into it so when we first met almost three years ago um oh my god no i'm gonna tell it i'm gonna tell it i ain't no bitch so when we first met about three weeks ago we were both uh in school and uh (laughs) his room was right down the hall from mine so anyway you know i i created a trap he fell for it and um we ended up having sex and one thing about him if you go to his house if you go to a hotel room he's staying at anywhere he is in his own domain there is always music playing always and he grew up religious so a lot of the times he would have gospel music on and so i remember vividly one time we were in his room you know doing the thing and the meanest kurt franklin song came on and oh my god i felt so wrong i was just like jesus please do not judge me for this moment nobody can reach the laptop to turn the song off so it was just like i've been looking for you and in the back you just hear (laughs) like it was the most ungodly thing i've ever been a part of and i felt so ashamed but like what could i do y'all what could i do okay i can't do anything and i felt so bad i was like that can never happen again and yeah so like don't 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 fuck to gospel music y'all it's it's not it's you you're gonna feel very bad for the rest of the day and and i can 100 percent guarantee you that was that a kurt franklin song i just sung is that kurt franklin hey y'all don't judge my singing i'm actually a fantastic singer my throat is just I, I truly don't even know if that was a Kurt Franklin song. That was the song that was playing. Don't know who sung it. Anyway, all right, y'all. I said this episode was going to be short, lying like usual. Let's go ahead and wrap this bitch up and get into the existential crisis thought. Existential crisis thought. Existential crisis thought. Okay, y'all. So recently, I have been really trying to get into praying and just being more open to god and stuff like that and you know if you listen to this uh podcast then you know that i have a very unusual relationship with god and so for me personally when i try to give god a presence that's outside of my own consciousness because that's just who god is to me um when i try to give him a presence outside of my own consciousness it's extremely difficult to me because i don't know the word and i um i don't know you know what i'm saying i I don't really know him that well i just know it's a feeling that i have right even though my parents are diehard christians you know they know the word they know the book they know everything i don't so the only thing that i have uh for god is literally what i feel and so i just wanted to tell y'all this because literally it's an existential crisis thought and uh It's just what I I thought it was kind of funny. So I just feel like whenever I try to tell people about my relationship with God and not make it negative, I try to say, like, I feel like me and God's relationship is like a neighbor in an apartment complex. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can hear him, but you hardly ever see him. And then when you do see him, you're not like 100 percent sure as them. So you're like, should I say something? Do I do something like how do I how do I know that's them? Like, I heard him before. I heard people talking to him, but like, I never seen his face before. Like, should I introduce myself? Like, that's a neighborly thing to do, right? Should I say something? I ain't gonna say nothing. That nigga don't want to talk to me. He he doing a lot. He don't want to talk to me. And then you see him again, and it's just like, 
I got to say something, bro. Like, like we living in this, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I got to say something. He know I'm here. He probably see me staring at him. I'm going to say something. So do you just say like, hey, you know what I'm saying? Just to like establish some type of little relationship. Like, How you doing? You know? And then maybe over a couple months, y'all have maybe shared a, a couple sentences, you know, like, oh, that's your car. Oh, yeah, I was wondering who drove that. That's cute. You know what I'm saying? And then like after a while, it's just like, okay, when is it okay for me to ask this nigga to watch my dog? You know what I'm saying? Like, when is it okay to start asking like neighborly favors like it's just I, y'all I get so I just get so anxiety filled when I think about him it's just like he hasn't been a part of my life for a long time and I, I used to write him off so hard when I was a kid especially when I was going through foster care and I was getting abused I was like obviously this man don't give a fuck about me so I'm not gonna give a fuck about him so I'm just I don't know how to like I, it's so hard y'all you see why this is the existential crisis thought because it's just like we have a relationship, but it's nowhere near the relationship that people, that Christians have. Like, they are 100% devoted to this being that they are 100% sure is outside of their mind and body. A standalone being. They are, like, devoted to this man. And I, I don't know if I could do that. Like, the God that I have a relationship with and the God that I talk to uh, on the rare occasions that I do... I feel like I'm just talking to like myself or like I'm talking to me in another para- parallel universe or something, which is fine. You know, it's just, I don't know. I feel like I'm trying to make myself feel like an outsider. or I'm trying to make myself feel like what I'm doing is wrong, even though, you know, it's not. I don't know. <sighs> I don't know. <laughs> That's my existential crisis thought for today, guys. It's literally like exactly that. Um... But yeah, that's the end of the episode, guys. I said it was going to be a short one. Here we are riding on an hour. That's just what you get when you tap into the Chemically Imbalanced Black Girl podcast. If you have not left a review, please leave a review. Just say, here, here, Zarya Damn. Always asking for shit. Just say that in the review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Just give me something. If you're listening on YouTube, you are a ride or die bitch because... There's nothing to watch and you're literally just looking at a picture with a voice behind it. And I, I fuck with you real hard for that. Like personally, like when the Patreons start coming, the, the niggas who, who are on YouTube, y'all are going to get something special out of me really, because that takes dedication. Cause ain't no fucking way I'd watch that. <laughs> but I hope you guys have a good day and happy Halloween again. Please don't forget to show me your costumes. Peace. <laughs>